I'll be nice to have a look at this power bank and try and fix it. Apparently the sockets are a bit dodgy on it, so uh, I've got the sockets over here. Let's have a look, see if we can do it. Firstly, sorry about the noise in the background. It's a bit cold in here, it's winter, and it's currently 15 degrees. So, um, I'm a bit cold. <laughs> I'm afraid you have to live with the noise. Okay, let's get this thing open. Should be fairly simple to work on, hopefully. So the guy uses this to heat the jacket up. He's got a jacket with like heaters in it, because it's winter, you know. And apparently he runs it off this power bank. Pulls a couple of amps out, apparently. And uh, interesting concept. So that's why he's you know, wanted to get this thing going because it's currently feeling the cold a little bit. And if, what apparently is happening is the one of the power sockets are getting hot. Well, one of the USB sockets getting hot. It's got the battery stuck to the bottom casing. Okay, top, top casing, solar panel, and there's the board. And it's got a bunch of 18650s in there. 1800 milliamp hours. Is that what's got in there? 1800s. That's pretty low capacity. Five of those, which are in parallel. Yep, all strapped in parallel. So it's not a very high capacity bank, really, is it? A 10,000 milliamp hour pack, if they are 2,000 milliamp hours, but they're not. They're 1800. 9,000 milliamp hours. So I don't think it's what he claims to be anyway. Did it say 10,000 on there? I thought it did. Am I thinking of something else? No, it's even worse. <laughs> it claims 30,000 milliamp hours, 3.7 volt. Well, that's really not right, is it? It's only 9,000. <laughs> hmm. Don't believe everything you read. Let's have a close look at the circuitry before I pull the thing apart. Sockets, that's one amp, two amp. This one here is, looks like it's melted inside a little bit. It doesn't look quite right. This one looks like it's slightly twisted. So, as a natural plate inside is slightly wonky. Just looks a little bit wrong. I don't know if you can see that on there. Yeah, figures. Just doesn't look quite right. See, it looks like it's slightly twisted, that plate on the right. And see this one here, looks like it's melted a little bit. So, that one's definitely knackered, but this one, I don't know, maybe it might be right. It kind of looks okay, really, apart from being slightly twisted, but I'll probably replace them both. Probably in parallel anyway, it's probably just a load of rubbish. So what do we have? Obviously LED, LED scaling, power switch, a bit of a boost converter. This is in charge up apart from the solar panel. Alright, so there's a 5 volt input there, which is upside down. So that's obviously how you charge it. So yes, that's a boost converter because it runs off the batteries. So that's a boost circuit which is then going to power those sockets. And so this 5 volt socket over here is going to be coming down the diode there. Hmm. Nothing obvious there, but it must be a charge circuitry in there. I mean, that's probably, all the stuff over here must be charge circuitry. And obviously the LED stuff, you know. The microcontroller over here, that would be doing all that stuff. Oh, that's a power bank. How exciting is it going to be? So, anyway, we'll get these sockets out, hopefully. Right, let's get it out. So the battery pack, I think, will drop out the bottom. I'm going to have to look at how this comes out. So that's held in place with a couple of screws. So let's take this board out before I go any further. I think it will slide out the bottom with the battery pack. I think it's kind of hooked underneath the bottom here. So then got to kind of lift up a little bit. Something. It will come. There you go. So that part. Try and wiggle this out. The sockets are pushed through the plastic, so there we go. Press the frame off and there's a little plastic button. So what do we have to do to fix this thing? Well I think I'm gonna have to disconnect the batteries to make it safe for a start. I think I should take those off. And then let's have a close look at these sockets. That's not what I want. Um, oh, I saw some right ones. Here we go. Triangle sockets. They might be the right ones. 
course there's lots of different types but these look like they'll do the job they look pretty close these ones are more underneath the actual socket because these are pins coming out the back um, So I looked at both of my sets and neither one of them has actually got quite the right parts in them. So the closest one I've got is one I already looked at. So they had the service mount ones, which I obviously showed before, which isn't quite the right one. And I've got a through hole one here, which because of the flanging on the front, it's not quite the right part. I don't think I've got anything else I can actually use. These are males, so that's not what we want. We want female. So it's a bit of a weird sort of socket because these things always flanged. Well I think I'm going to have to put this repair on hold since I don't have the right part. I'm going to have to get them. It's a bit annoying. Oh well, never mind. It happens. So if this video comes out then you know I found the right part. If it doesn't come out then you never see it anyway so it doesn't matter. Well it could be a failed repair. It might be a failed repair. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, that sort of stuff anyway. What the hell. Do it anyway. <laughs> and um, hopefully I can get the right parts of this thing. If there's more video after this then I did get them. Hmm. So these parts finally arrived to do this battery pack thing. It's, uh, I don't know, anyway, it took ages, months and months. Now, unfortunately, I've got this bag of various assorted USB plugs and sockets because um, I saw one which looked like the right one. Anyway, it turns out it only came with one of those, which is kind of annoying because I need two. Because it's got two sockets now. I've taken one of them off already. You can see it's kind of melted and stuff here. Now I got it off. Lead free solder, you know, a bit more heat. Anyway, so I've got that off. It's just hot air and anyway, a bit of flux and stuff. So I'll go put the new one on to at least replace that one. So that's the two amp one I've taken off. I hope because <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's a two amp socket. So that's why I'm just giving the most trouble. So at least I've got that connector there to replace. So I've just got to solder that back on again, and um, yeah, I'm going to have to give it back as it is because I don't have another one to do that side, which is kind of irritating. It's been months doing this. Oh well. Right, so I've soldered one side on, flamed it out a little bit. I've got to clean this off yet. It's, it looks awful, but uh, I'll do with that. Anyway, one side soldered on, so it's now lined up and flat. Do this side here, try and get the flow through. Then we'll do with the legs, the data pins and the power supply side. And then it should actually be okay. Hopefully it will flow through to the other side of the board. But yeah, this has been a bit of a mission. I'm using this solder because it's, well, my less nice solder I suppose. But it's got heaps of flux on it. And hopefully it's gone through to the other side okay and not shorted out. Hopefully. So the connector is very slightly different from the original one, but that shouldn't matter. As long as I don't short it out. Which I need to check for. Well, let's give it a clean up. Now, I've got these Kim wipes which just arrived the other day actually, so let's give these a go. I think we've got two stuff together. I do. Let's give these a try. I mean, the people swear by them, so let's get those and a brush. And we shall see how well it does. I mean, this is this awful flux which is really hard to get rid of so I might have to be a bit, bit more stubborn with it because it's, this flux is awful it really it sort of bakes on I have to scrub it but uh, I mean, you can see on the Kim wipe anyway it's tearing yeah I don't know I think I might have to scrub it first so there you go that's all cleaned up now so this side looks a lot better than the original side does actually but unfortunately so I can't replace the second socket so let's put it back together anyway so what I did obviously is I desoldered the battery before so let's reattach that and I'll drop it back in the case and hopefully try it out Pretty awful solder for the battery, but anyway, I shall try and tidy it up a little bit. That looks slightly better. Let's put it back in the case and we'll power it up.
and hopefully see if it goes. All right, got that pole back in again. I'll sort of screw it back together so it doesn't fall apart. And hopefully, well, maybe some charge of the batteries. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. But, uh, apparently, the problems are the sockets are just dodgy, and so I mean, not physically, I couldn't really see much wrong with them. Just slightly pressed in that sort of stuff, but. Yeah, well, let's see what it turns on. No life, so let's charge it up then. Yeah, well, let's plug it in, see if it's going to go. Of course, the plug always wants to go the wrong way up, doesn't it? Well, well it's doing that much at least. Cool. So it reckons it does have power in it. Maybe it um, needs that initial power to get the, the BMS to work. I know that um, on some BMS modules it requires you to power it before it will turn on. So it's got a state. It's currently doing 5 milliamps and climbing, 500. So it's gradually climbing up to 600. So I might just give this a charge up first and I'll see if it actually works or not. But yeah, so that's the plug I, or the socket I replaced. That's the original one over here. So that's my one amp, this is my other two amp. So I replaced the two amp one. So hopefully it's. Um, so, okay, that's 600 milliamps now, it seems to have stopped there. I'll come back later. There you go, it's turned on. So, I need to actually test this thing, see if it actually works. Okay, here we go, I've got it hooked up to my electronic load. Let's power it on. And we get 5.2 volts over here. Okay, chuck on one amp, I think I've got set to. Yep, one amp. One amp loading, it's handling that fine. Let's uh, pump it up a bit. Oh, 1.4 amps is singing. 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. Okay. 1.8, 2 amps. What was 4.5? Does it have a cutout? It does. It cuts out 2.3 amps or so. Turn it back on there. Turn back on. 2.2 amps cuts out. Cool. So, yep, it's got current protection on there. Yeah, remember one digit. Right, so yep, yeah, that's fine. That will produce two amps. How long will do it for? I don't know. It's only a little circuitry. So let's try the one amp socket. And we'll see what we get there. Max that one out. Turn this on. So one amp is doing 4.7 volts there. So both sockets seem to be doing what they're supposed to do. That's good. I think that's a six will appear. Hopefully. Catch you later. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you next one. Bye.